good morning. Thank you for joining us again for our devotional study on the parables of Jesus. Today I want to do two parables which basically have the same theme. They're both taken from the Gospel of Luke. The first is in Luke chapter 11. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. Because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is really locked and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, although he will not get up and give him the bread because he is his friend, yet because of the man's boldness he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. The first story is about a person then who goes to his friend to borrow three loaves of bread because a traveler has arrived and he, there is no food in the house. The problem is that the request comes at midnight when the man's in bed with his family. And the person gets the predictable response, go away, don't you know what time it is? But obviously the man persists. And so the friend eventually relents and gets up and gives him food for him to go away. Jesus says not because he is his friend, but because of his boldness. You see, the man was not going away, going to go away until his request had been answered. Now the danger with the story is suggesting that God is the friend in the story, who is too tired and too busy to answer prayer. That is never the case. What Jesus is doing is making a comparison from the lesser to the greater. In effect, he's saying that in life, if even a tired, already in bed person would get up to provide this man with food in order to get rid of him, how much more will God, who is a real friend and never gets tired and grumpy, will he not answer the request from someone in need in a very practical way? And I say practical way, because God teaches us to love in a practical way. And so he in turn is not just a God who answers our spiritual needs, but often he answers our specific practical needs. He is concerned often with the smaller things in life. After all, Jesus was the one that changed water into wine and recorded in John chapter 2 to save the possibility of a wedding reception going belly up. Now, a similar parable is told by Jesus in Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 7, which I'd like to read. Would you turn with me then to Luke 18, verses 1 to 7? Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared for men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because of this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, you will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Now that, again, is a second simple parable. It's about a, a judge who neither fears God nor cares about men. He's a most unpalatable character. And he's constantly being bothered by a widow who is seeking justice against someone who has caused her wrong. And the judge initially ignores her, but eventually he relents and he deals with her case to get her off his back. Again, the judge is not to be confused with God. Jesus is again using a comparison from the lesser to the greater when he makes the point that if that's how an unsavory character would eventually relent and grant the request, how much more will God answer a persistent prayer request? You see, God's never bothered by our requests. He actually invites us to bring them to him. So the lesson is the same in each parable. 
don't stop bringing your requests before God, no matter how small sometimes they may seem to him. Pray constantly and do not give up. He invites you to ask, seek and knock. And again, the only condition is that you come in faith. You must have faith to believe that he answers those who bring their request to him. I chuckled at a statement recently made by the president of Uganda, Kaguto Museveni, challenging his people not to misbehave and commit crime during the lockdown. He said, God has a lot of work. He has the whole world to look after. He cannot just be here in Uganda looking after you idiots. I chuckle at that, but actually God is omnipresent, omniscient and omnipotent. He can be everywhere at all times, and he's not bothered by our requests when we speak to him often. Not only does Jesus, the Son of God, tell us that and promise answers, but he invites us to bring our requests before him. Friends, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, says Ephesians 4, 6. Come, let's pray. Heavenly Father, teach us again to pray and not stop praying. To be bold and persistent in our prayer and bring our requests before you in faith, trusting that you're a good God who delights to bless us with all good things. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. God bless you until next time.